Welcome to this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. I'm your host, Sandrine Mutoniwase. As climate change continues to reshape the way we grow food, Rwanda is turning to innovation, investment, and collaboration to build a more resilient agriculture sector. In this episode, we explore the rollout of the Climate Smart Agriculture Investment Plan, an ambitious national strategy that brings the public and private sectors together to future-proof farming. With unpredictable rainfall, rising temperatures, and declining soil quality, farming in Rwanda and across Africa is under pressure. Rwanda is responding with a long-term plan that blends climate action with business opportunity. At the heart of that vision is a shift in mindset, one that positions agriculture not as a risky venture, but as a smart investment for growth. The Climate Smart Agriculture Investment Plan, uh, it's a plan, um, I think as the name suggests, that combines agriculture and environment. You know, in the past, uh, we have been doing agriculture uh, in a way that's destructive, uh, that uh, where we have been getting gains uh, in terms of yields, but which are short term, because it has not been integrated. Um, where some of the practices have not been environment friendly. Um, for example, cutting of trees and forests um, to clear land for agriculture. So ultimately what we have today, uh, we see climate change, the rains are erratic, uh, they don't come at the right time, uh, what is scarce, um, the soil health has been degraded uh, because of continuous steerage. Uh, where actually there are better ways of, um, of, of tillage that can actually conserve uh, the, the soils. And ultimately, actually, that boils to um, declining agricultural productivity and profitability. So, which makes it difficult for investors, for the private sector, uh, to invest uh, in, in the sector. So, this plan, um, so I call it a plan because it's a climate smart agriculture investment plan. So, this plan it actually addresses those issues that create agriculture, make people perceive agriculture as a risk um, uh, area to invest in. Uh, the Rwanda Green Fund is a financing vehicle established by the government of Rwanda, uh, really with a mandate to mobilize, invest and catalyze climate finance. And so we ensure that there's transformation of change on the ground. And we, we, when it comes to the private sector, uh, we actually have uh, several instruments where we provide grants, but also we've recently reintroduced what we call recoverable grants. Um, and eventually we're also looking to move into the equity financing uh, model. Um, so this, this is to say that um, when you look at um, the pipeline we have, or when we look at the potential businesses we have, I think it's now focusing more on the private sector, we realize that there isn't one instrument that can you know, cater for the needs. So we very much uh, work in, first of all, we start off by understanding the needs. Uh, so for example, when it comes to our private sector players, you know, where are they in terms of the business life cycle, but what are other gaps? Then we develop financial instruments and products that can actually help them move uh, from feasibility to bankability. So the role of the fund is mainly coming in early to de-risk de -risk, um, de -risk projects, but also uh, build a bankable pipeline which can then become attractive to the financial sectors so of the commercial banks. The plan is not just a policy. It is a tool to steer real investment towards practical, on-the-ground solutions. And it is aligned with Rwanda's broader development strategies. In this uh, investment plan, we have identified key areas where we can invest money and then we de-risk agriculture and therefore create um, uh, a pool of financing and this is irrigation. Irrigation is very key, so we score it 62%. 62%, that is, we have experience again. We have done it because, simply because, we have done it before as a government. I give example of Gabriel Group Business Hub, where we just brought water near to the farms and immediately 
with what investors going to into the agribusiness hub. I'm very excited on the future of the climate smart agriculture. We as a company strongly believe in this uh, sustainable practices which help even in the, the climate change environment in which we work to help us to keep the productivity and the profitability of our business and uh, this conference is a great way to address the issue. The CSA investment plan is a good tool combining all the existing policies, strategies and all the the stakeholders like the policy makers, the development institutions, the commercial banks finally asked the, the farmers to address all the issues and to find a way to finance the, those sustainable practices which will help not only in our business but will help with the food security of the country, with the productivity, of it, with economical growth and of course with the livelihood of the communities where we work and operate. Most of our innovations are already climate smart. Um, our four our principles ensures that we reduce the carbon emission in the soil by ensuring that nitrogen is placed at the right time you know when it is needed by the spy by the plant also that most of our um, the new formulas that have been developed are geared towards ensuring that they are climate smart in a sense that um, um, we, we, we take we took into consideration specific soil types specific crops within the agroecological zones here in Rwanda. So it's a work in progress. We will keep working and keep innovating to ensure that the, the climate smart agricultural, invest, agricultural investment is profitable to all and sundry. Particularly for climate smart, of course, even our youth, we encourage them or support them to ensure that they have uh, different technologies that are needed to ensure that this, what they're doing is resilient in terms of irrigation, having different equipments that they need for irrigation, but not only that, uh, the technologies they use, some of them, as we have seen, they've, they've uh, manufactured a cold box which helps them to store their, their fresh products. So we see it as an opportunity for, for us to um, ensure that whatever intervention they're doing is resilient and can resist some of these uh, climate shocks in terms of uh, the long dry spells or even in floods. So during site selection, of course, we also have to ensure that the, the, the site, if they are producing avocado or these other products, is it uh, prone to disasters? So even in the process of site selection, they have to consider all of that. And again, in collaboration with the government, we are trying even to, to, to select sites that have been abandoned, but if you grow avocado, it can even hold uh, the soil and uh, reduce incidences of floods or soil uh, degradation. So there are so many ways we are doing in collaboration with the government and other partners to ensure that whatever they are doing is more resilient to climate shocks. Yeah. At its core, the investment plan is grounded in Rwanda's agriculture strategic plan from 2024 to 2029. Key elements include small-scale irrigation, water harvesting, and access to climate resilient technologies. Uh, so it is aligned to our um, uh, national strategies and more particularly to our agriculture uh, strategic plan for the next five years uh, which actually started in 2024 up to 2029. Uh, in that plan we have in our strategic plan we have um, three key pillars. Uh, the first pillar is productivity. So in productivity you are looking at inputs but one of the key inputs is water. Uh, then the second one is um, uh, post-service losses, reduction of post-service losses, and then linking farmers to the market. So in, 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 in brief, that, that's going to create the kind of impact that we want, which is productivity. And, uh, and because farmers who are in that business um, are sure they're going to get harvest, it's easy for them to plan in advance and link with the market, sign contracts. So to me, it's going to make the impact that we want. This plan is aligned to our national agricultural strategic plan for the next five years. We, we are actually predominantly our farmers as small scale farmers. So what we have done, we have done a two track approach to support our farmers. Those who have got land that can be consolidated, we, we, we try, we work with them 
consolidate so that we can provide the kind of support, the same kind of support I'm talking about. So for example, if you go to the Eastern Province, you will, sign, you will see big swath of land, more than 2,000 hectares, that's irrigated. But what actually when you, you find out who are the owners, you find maybe a thousand farmers, but they are together, but you see it as one piece. So we are able to scale, create economies of scale, we're able to provide extension services because those farmers are together. So this is not for big farmers, it's for all farmers, but we just have to change uh, the way we do business by bringing these farmers together. Those who are not, um, in those who don't, who don't have piece of land that can be brought together, then we provide what to call small scale irrigation. There are different ways how they can access water. There are those who are near water bodies, but also we are integrating water harvesting as well. Uh, at least I know in our country, there will be no single year when we miss the rains. The rains are there, but the water just runs away. So with the water harvesting, even those farmers are able to harvest water and then use small scale technologies, which we are providing as a government uh, in a subsidized way. Uh, and, and therefore, this plan in, you know, covers uh, all types of our farmers. But this uh, plan is a good start. Now we have also to work and all the stakeholders have to work on the, uh, creating awareness about the procedures, about the products which are available, so we all can, can access this financing and improve our farming. My call to action is really to align public and private capital uh, behind uh, uh, an investment pipeline, you know, an investment pipeline. Uh, and through this, we'll then be able to really uh, empower our farmers. By having this kind of plan, and if we can replicate what we did in Gabiro, then we can see more investors coming in, and then agricultural productivity increasing simply because we are not relying on, on changing um, uh, weather patterns, uh, but we can actually control when we can irrigate. And that means banks are ready to provide insurance simply because they are sure that the farm has got a very high chance of getting uh, yield. From strategy to action, Rwanda is reimagining agriculture with climate resilience at its core. With private capital, local innovation and government commitment aligned, the future of farming in Rwanda looks smarter, greener and more secure. I was your host, Sandrine Mutoniwasi. Stay tuned for more programs coming up on CNBC Africa.